Once we've decided on the finish and lengths of each track that we're going to use, uh, the next consideration is how we're going to fasten it to the wall or to the floor of your trailer. Uh, the most important thing is your e-track is only going to be as strong as the way it's mounted. Next, locate the substructure of the trailer. So you're looking for the studs in the wall or the substructure in the floor. If there's any kind of skin or subfloor, the way to find that is look for screw patterns. Once you've identified where the screw patterns are, we want to line our e-track up so that we can hit as many of those as we can with a self-tapping screw uh, or through bolt. Once we've attached the sections of E-Track hitting as many substructures as possible, the next thing to do is to uh, apply fasteners to the field. So in between those substructures, if it's a wood wall, we can use hex head wood screws. If it's metal, we can just use self-tapping metal screws again. If it's through bolting, we can use a screw with a large washer and nut on the backside to ensure the strongest connection possible. Considering that the E-Track system is only as strong as the way it's fastened, it's going to depend on the application of how many holes I hit. If it's on 16 inch center and I'm able to hit every 6 inches with a through bolt, I'm probably going to get every 4th or 5th hole in the field. If I'm unable to through bolt and just use metal screws, then I'm going to hit every 3rd hole maybe. It just depends on the application and how good of a fastening system and what you're able to hit with the fasteners.